Good evening and welcome to Only Connect. I'm sorry I'm a bit out of breath. The spin class ran late this afternoon. Well, my driver couldn't get out of there, so I had to walk the 100 yards from the hotel. I'm exhausted. Playing this evening, we have, on my right, Oscar Powell, a geology graduate with an interest in taxonomy whose first word was hedge. Lewis Barn, a law student who once shared a return flight from Australia with Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees. And their captain, Jack Bennett, an English student who enjoys a paisley print and has visited Greece 15 times. United by a passion for fashion, they are the dandies. So you've won a match and lost a match. You beat the gaffers, but you didn't beat the beaks. What have you learned from your Only Connect experience so far? Not to go for five pointers when you don't actually know the answer. <laughs> yes. No, no, you mustn't uh, follow that principle. Always go for the five if you can. So glorious if you get it. You are playing this evening on my left. Sarah Lister, an archaeology and ancient history graduate who once bumped into Boris Johnson while passing through a small doorway. Hannah Hogben, a chemistry graduate who's written an award-winning song about a squid. And their captain, Nick Lister, a fraud prevention specialist who knows the words to around the world with Willy Fogg in five different languages. United by a devotion to darts, they are the arrowheads. So, Nick, you won your first game against the Wombles, but you lost to the Detectives. And you've come all the way from Edinburgh to play this quiz. How have you been discovering lovely Cardiff? What have you been up to here? Uh, we went out yesterday and found the very impressive Lidl, and we also went for a nice walk around the bay in the evening. And there are so many other wonderful supermarkets. That's the main thing about Cardiff. Nice to see you again. Dandies, you won the toss, so you'll be going first. Please choose your Egyptian hieroglyph. Twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. What is the connection between these apparently random clues? Here's the first. Um, is that, that's a type of song. Next, please. It might be, yeah, but yes. I, I'm not getting a film or TV show or something like that. Yeah. Next. Yeah. next, please. Are they the occupations of people in Charles Dickens novels? David Copperfield could be a prompt yes. in should we go for that? Yeah. We, we think these are the sort of titular characters of Charles Dickens novels and their occupations in the, in the books. They are occupations of title characters in Charles Dickens. You didn't need to see Barnaby, unemployed villager. Who's that? Barnaby, Barnaby Rudge. Rudge. Barnaby Rudge, that's right. And uh, some people have more than one job. I think David Copperfield and Oliver Twist do various things, but those are the ones they're famous for. Well done for two points. Over to you, Arrowheads, for a choice. Uh, lion, please. Lion. OK, these are going to be picture clues. What connects them? Here's the first. Next. Next. And next. Three seconds. Uh, we're going to go cowboys. Not the connection, I'm afraid. So, Danny, you've got the chance for bonus point. Um, mm. All named from novels. They do not all take their names from novels. The key here is the second clue, which I don't think anybody at home will have recognised either. Uh, clues one, three and four are crow, words and hat. Clue two is the band Humble Pie. Oh. So these are all things that you can eat in phrases. Eating crow is when you admit you've made a mistake. You know, the Washington Post, after Harry Truman's election, they said he couldn't possibly win, and after he won, they sent him an invitation to a crow banquet to say they've made a mistake. Eat humble pie, of course, eat your words, and eat my hat in surprise if something happens that you're not expecting. Figuratively edible items. No bonus then, Dandies. What would you like as a question? Uh, water, please. Water. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Stone offer, that's John Williams. Do we think they're all just people called John Williams? Let's go next, because that's ambiguous. Next, please. Yeah. Is it? Uh, John Williams. All called John Williams. They are all called John Williams. Very well done. 
and uh, you could have gone for it after mm. one clue. I know that you're a bit nervous because you went for five points in your first game, so I can see why you'd be a, a little trigger shy. But you came in after two clues, that's three points, still an excellent score, all people known as John Williams. Back to you, Arrowheads, for a choice. Uh, Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. It's the music question. Fantastic. Not your lucky day so far, but you never know. <laughs> what is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Uh, next. This is the thing you change to. Next. Is it Scottish? Yeah. Yeah. These are TV theme tunes relating to shows in, relating to Scotland. Very patriotic, but I'm afraid not the right answer. So I'm going to play a blast of the last clue to the dandies for a possible bonus. <laughs> Um, theme songs to TV shows set on islands. It's theme tunes to TV shows set on islands. That's absolutely right. Balamori, that mm -hmm. third one, is uh, on Tobermory in the Isle of Mull. It's filmed there and it is set on an island in Scotland. Father Ted, oh, you're recognising now. <laughs> yes, the Divine Comedy performed that track for Father Ted. And the first one, do you know what that was? Is it Magnum P.A.? Magnum P.I. set in... Hawaii. Hawaii, Hawaii. Hawaii. That's right. Uh, not uh, not the Isle of Mull. That one. <laughs> and uh, and the last the last one. Bergerac, is it? It's Bergerac. That's absolutely right. The Channel Islands. All theme tunes for TV shows set on islands. Well done. And what would you like next? Uh, Haunted Viper, please. Okay. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. <laughs> Next, please. Next, please. Yeah, it's supermarket on food. Supermarket premium arm brands. That's exactly what it is. You didn't see taste the difference at the end there. What are the supermarkets? Uh, well, finest is Tesco. Yeah. Um, M signatures at Moisons. Or, yep. Uh, extra special Asta. Mm hmm. Taste of the same Yeah. It's the only yeah. supermarket. You visit a lot of supermarkets. <laughs> That's right. And it's the premium ranges, the idea that the fancier stuff is called. It's sort of the opposite of, for example, the essentials yeah, yeah. range at Waitrose. That's very basic stuff. Vermicelli nests. Yeah. That's in the essentials range. Cappuccino mousse. Poppy and sesame seed thins. They're in the essential range. That's just the basic everyday the everyday goods, but the, yeah. the top fancy stuff has these names. Well done. One last question, Arrowheads. Your last chance to get some points this round. Many wishes of good luck to you. It's the two reads. Time starts now. Next. And next. Yeah, it must be. Uh, next. Uh, is this Beecher's Brook at the Grand National? Uh, Tell me something a little bit more. Are they the names of fences? Yes, I mean, I can take that. That's Beecher's Brook at the end there. Do you oh, know which fences? No, I, I'm, afraid, <laughs> I'm not, not good at horse racing, I'm afraid. Are you horse race fans over there? Well, no. 67 is Foynhaven. That's right. Um, horse that jumped it backwards, uh, Valentine. That's Valentine at Valentine's yeah. Brook. Dis distance judges a chair. So. That's the chair. Yeah. Yes, do you know the story of the 1967 Grand National? Yeah, well, they all fell uh, the fence that would become Foynhaven. Um, and Foynhaven, because it was 100 to one shot, it was so far behind, it just sort of picked a path through. The sort of carnage and it's an amazing bit of footage do look it up if you haven't seen it Foynhaven is such a long shot it's so far behind the field when pretty much every horse falls at the 23rd fence he's so far behind them that he can just sort of gallop round them and goes ahead to win the race other horses finish but the jockey's got back on you know to finish the race and that fence is named after him Foynhaven an absolutely wonderful horse and that means at the end of round one the arrowheads have one point the dandies have eight
On to round two, the sequence is round. Dandies, you'll be going first again. Which would you like? Lion, please. OK, you're about to see the first in a sequence of clues. What would come fourth? Time starts now. Four volumes of the UK. But we don't think it's a Or four, five, is it? No, no, it can't be seven. Total more than if it's four. Yeah. Let's go, let's go one more. If it's Richard. If it's three Richard. Next, please. Yeah. Six Georges. Six Georges. Let's go next. Say next. Next, please. Oh, it's Preston's present source. One Barak. Yes. It's a bar because it's a seven. Oh, no, no, Barak. Yeah, go for it. Just, just. One Barack. Is an acceptable yeah. answer. We went with one Donald. What is this sequence? <laughs> it's so. the first names of US presidents and the quantity of each that there has been. So there's been four Williams, three Georges, two Andrews, Frank, one's Thomases, and only one Barack, or if you like, a Donald. That's absolutely right. Who have those four Williams been? Uh, William Henry Harrison, mm -hmm. William okay. McKinley, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Bill Clinton. Bill William Clinton. William and, um, this is going to annoy me. And uh, Taft. Oh, of course. Yeah. Do you want to have a go at the Georges? The two George Bushes and Washington. Exactly. So the Andrews, Franklins, Thomases, Jackson, Johnson, Pierce, Roosevelt, Jefferson. And uh, do you want to have a go at some other people that there's only been one of? Zachary. There's been one Zachary, Zachary Millard. Taylor. One Millard. One Millard, Millard Fillmore. Yes. Um, yeah. I don't think there have Calvin. been many Abrahams and Ulysses. Calvin. <laughs> Calvin. And Martin, Martin Van Buren. Very good. Uh -huh. Ronald, Gerald. This is quite a fun thing for a quiz at home. You just go, who can write down more of them in 30 seconds? But that's right, it's US presidential first names and we wanted to hear somebody of whom there'd only been one, for example, Barack, as you said. Well done. Arrowheads, what would you like next? Uh, water, please. Water. OK, what would come fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Thursday, April the 4th. And why would that be? We're thinking that the date is increasing by one each time and the month is increasing by four, and what day of the week that would be. I'm afraid that doesn't work as a sequence. Dan, do you want to have a go for a bonus point? Um, Wednesday, April the 4th. And why would that be? Well, the same reason, but just a different day. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, that's not it. This is, fiendishly hidden, a word question. Ignore the first, second, third. That's nothing to do with the date. It's just the first clue, second clue, third clue. Mm. And we have put the days and months into alphabetical order. If you put the days into alphabetical order, Friday will be first, then Monday, then Saturday. Yeah. And the months, April, August, December. So the next day would be Sunday and the next month, February. So Sunday, February would be fourth. Okay. Dandies, what would you like? Eye of Horus, please. Eye of Horus. What would come fourth in this picture sequence? Is the first. Next, please. Is it about the creators or? Next, please. I don't know who that is. Well, that's just thinking. To how many slots? Minion post. Is it like a nursery ring or something? It's a minion post. Minion post. It's not like letters in the Alpha Center. No, I've no idea what that means. It's a thing. 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 Um, mm -hmm. Let's just go with another thing. Two seconds. Um, no, we don't. Know. Nothing? No guess? <laughs> Literally nothing. Fair enough. You have a bonus chance then. Arrowheads. A uh, picture of Fireman Sam. And why would that be? Uh, something. Some sequence connected to either the occupation or the first name, uh, which we're not quite sure of the, exactly how it works. That's not it. A minion in the Despicable Me films has three fingers on each hand. Postman Pat has four fingers. That's just a normal human. You don't need to recognise that person. Just a human, five fingers on each hand. 
So I want to hear somebody with six digits. We've put a picture of Anne Boleyn, although she probably didn't. I mean, legend has it, six fingers on the right hand. She probably didn't, but we would have accepted most of our question writers here. They're, they're generally six-fingered people. Gemma Arterton, the actor, she said in an interview once that she was born with six fingers on each hand. So Garfield Sobers, the cricketer. Various people, but someone with six digits on their hand I wanted to hear. What would you like, Arrowheads? Uh, twisted flax, please. They're twisted flax. OK, what will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Would you like as vegetarian? Uh, next. Primary. Uh, first in world China? Is the right answer. And why is that? I believe this is tea production, in order of which countries first, second, third and fourth. That's absolutely right. And how much of the world's tea do you think is produced by China as a percentage? About half. It was 38% of the world's tea. No. Kenyan tea, my notes inform me, is ideal with beef and horseradish or ham sandwiches. OK. OK. I mean, I think the question writer must have just been hungry when he jotted that down. I mean, I don't know that this is necessarily a fact. But apparently, if you're having a ham sandwich, a nice cup of Kenyan tea be just a thing. Well done. That was a tea question and China is the answer. Dandies, what would you like? Horned viper, please. Horned viper. OK. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. So, um, red, red, is it? Red planet, red planet. Um, I can't think it's not. Yeah, God, I think it's God, that's going to yeah, Next, please. Ungulates are like sort of ushadactyls and gorsodactyls and mammals, they're things with hooves. Yeah. In ungulate, Mars wine, are they? Something to be words, isn't it? Let's go, need to one. Let's go next. Next, please. Is it because it's like a koala and that's a koala and Oh, yes. Um, you, oh, oh, God. Um, I can't sorry. give you long. So, um, uh, M I K, um, J. Java names. No, I can't accept that answer. So, Arrowheads, you've got the chance of a bonus point. Uh, a word starting with J, to which the letters A L A can be added at the end, and the definition of that word. I'm afraid that's mm. not it either. Now, you thought of J as well, but it's oh, not it's alphabetical. It's this is about adding A L A to make another word. Marsala is a wine, impala is an ungulate, koala is a marsupial, but it's to do with the number of letters. Yeah, so it's not yeah. alphabetical. Four letters in Mars, three in imp, two in co. We need a single letter that can be followed by A L A. We went with G, G A L A, a bingo club, or a sort of apple or something that's gala. Very close, both of you, but not it. There is one question remaining. The two reads, that will be for you arrowheads. What will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Uh, next. What do we do? Do we go for it or do we go for another one? Let's have one more. Okay. Uh, next. Yes, we should have gone for it. Uh, floor. As I heard you say, Sarah, like me on most weekends, <laughs> they finish on the floor. That is the right answer. What's happening here? Uh, I believe this is women's competitive gymnastics and the orders in which they do these routines. That's exactly right. In major competitions, they perform these routines in this order. You could have come in after two clues, of course. Yeah, nervous clicking. Well, of course, tonight somebody could be knocked out, so I can see everyone's being careful. Did you know, I mean, you probably did if you watch women's <laughs> gymnastics, that women have to perform their gymnastics routines to music? They have to, and men don't. And if the music has any lyrics, they're penalised. Is that amazing? <laughs> If, you, if women are doing gymnastics, we like to hear some lovely music, not words. They get in the way. We really want to concentrate. We want to watch them with some lovely instrumental music. Is the rules of international gymnastics. Yes, that is absolutely right. Female artistic gymnastic apparatus in order. The floor would come forth. That means at the end of round two, the arrowheads have five points. The dandies have ten. <laughs>
If only we all had 18 fingers for the connecting wall, because there are 16 clues. They're all over the place, and the teams have to sort them into four connected groups of four. You'll be going first this time, Arrowhead. So would you like lion or water? Uh, water, please. Water. You have two and a half minutes to solve the water wall, starting now. Um, yeah. OK. So, Dennis, you can. That was Humphrey. Humphrey Littleton. Humphrey Appleby. From, uh, yes, Minister. OK. So that's three. What's the surname of Humphrey from the... Humphrey, uh, Humphrey Davy, the uh, chemist. OK, what else is there? Plumage from a branch. Uh, OK. Uh, plumage from... Davy lamp. Table lamp, lava lamp, lamp. hurricane. Yes. So, Davy lamp, lava lava lamp. Lava lava lamp. lamp. Okay, let's... Hurricane. Okay, what other ones? Oh, yeah. I'll carry on with those. Yeah. So, Newton. So we've got Wren, Newton, as 17th century figures. Um, Dave, could, could be Peeps. Trace. Yeah. Okay, so Wren. Three lives now. Uh, uh, Newton and Peeps are 17th century figures. So we've got some mm -hmm. plumage, figurative, pearl. And zero. So, maybe figurative Hang on. Fee, plum, fig, pea, line. Okay. And, and unless there's anything else that could. Any other ones that no, would no, be. No, no, no. Nothing we'll else. Try that could. as a set then. Okay. okay we'll Do we want to just well, take the time to just think is there more combination between those four than just the same time period? Yeah, well, he was a chemist, he was a architect, diarist, and. Are they a in a group that's called something like a particular stage of thinking? Is there any terminology that puts them together? They did different. Okay. They want to Do we want to give it a try just to make sure they go? That's it. You solved the wall. Very well done. Clinically performed. That is four points for the groups. Okay. What about the connections? The first blue group: Appleby, Burton, Downing Street, Cat, Littleton. Uh, these are all called Humphrey. They are all Humphreys. Who are they? Who are the Humphreys? Uh, Humphrey Appleby from Yes Minister. That's right. I'm not sure of Humphrey Burton actually. Um, Humphrey Littleton's a Comedian on radio. Uh, is he, uh, I'm sorry, I haven't. Interesting, you say that. Humphrey Burton is a broadcaster. Humphrey Littleton, the great, great <laughs> chair of I'm sorry, I haven't a clue, but actually a jazz musician. He wasn't a comedian. He was just an incredibly oh. funny and talented man. So well done for that point. What about the green group? Arc, hurricane, lava, table. Types of lamp. All types of lamp. Simply lamps. Pearl, plumage, figurative, limerick. We will begin with fruit or vegetables. Well, they do, and it's just fruit. You're seeing pea, oh, but pea. pear. Oh, I mean, you could say fruit course, or vegetables because it's pea, yeah. but they'd all be fruit if it was pear. pear. Course, they yeah. begin with fruit or fruit and veg. And the last turquoise group, Davy, Wren, Newton, Peeps. These are all famous historical figures from the 17th century. No, what they are is former presidents of the Royal Society. Oh. That's what they are. But you found four groups and you gave me three connection points. That is a total of seven. Good score. Let's bring in the dandies now, give them the other wall, the lion wall, and see how they get on with it. Two and a half minutes, of course, starting now. So, so these are good. Steve Kuhn. Oh, excellent, good. I think okay. Patrick might be a bit hairy for that, actually. But, yeah, good, okay, right. So, um, um, let's see. All types of bird. Oh, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's um, twelve days Christmas drummer. Uh, oh, of course. Yes. Well, 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 be careful. Be very careful. Three lives now. Okay. Plenty of time. Can uh, you, uh, fill out a slide in your cup. Oh, is that? Dug okay. out. Fill out. No. Escape. Fill out. Locked out. It could be. No, 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 right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Landscape. Land. Landscape. 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 Landscape, landslide, and we we'll we'll just be very careful before we cut that. Okay, so that's that's two lives now. Slide. Before you, before we cut that, I'm going to work out what that actual yeah, fourth no, one let's is. Work out, we sorry, yeah, we've got to work out what the fourth one is. So put in, right. let's put in Lord Skate. Okay. So oh, awesome. Neil Doug. So we've got Lord, Land Lord, Landlock, Landscape, Landfill, Slide, Doug, Neil, Jim. The fill must be with the others because they're all verbs. So we've got those in the next one. Doug. So Jim, Scape, Locked. Gilles. Oh, no, no, no. Homophones of men's names. Jim, Doug, Phil. Neil, Excellent. and Let's just be very careful. Make sure Jim, it doesn't apply to anything Jim, else. Jim, Doug. Doug. That must be there. Yeah. Yeah. Before you click that, just let's yeah. be quicker. You solved the wall. What I really love is to see a team debate its wall strategy <laughs> during play. Are the cracks starting to show in yeah. the dandies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're feeling annoyed yeah, at them, aren't you? Yeah. That's fame. We solved it. But you did solve it. Very well done. <laughs> He's taming my reflexes. It's very valuable. <laughs> now, 
I said that when I got married. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look for the connecting points. What about the first blue group oh. starting Thicket? Yeah, Steve Coogan characters. That's absolutely right. Who are those characters? Well, Duncan Thicket, mm -hmm. Tommy Saxondale, mm -hmm. Paul or Pauline Calf, mm -hmm. and Tony Farina. They're all Steve Coogan characters. And the green group starting Drummer. Yeah, elements of the 12 Days of Christmas. 12 Days oh, of Christmas. Yeah. How many of each would you find? Uh, is it 12 drummers drumming? Yes. One partridge in a pear tree. Yeah. Um, eight maids milking? Yes. And, and swans are swimming. So, yeah. Exactly so. Happy Christmas to you. <laughs> and what about the next group starting Neil? Hummer fans for men's names. Yeah. Read them out, please. Neil, Doug, Neil, Doug, Doug Phil, Phil Jim. Jim. Absolutely right. And the last turquoise group starting Locked. You can put land in front of them. Yes, you can. Land locked, landlord, landslide, landscape. You found all four groups. You gave me all four connections. I'll give you a bonus for that. That's a maximum of ten. Let's have a look at the overall scores. The Arrowheads have 12 points, the Dandies have 20. But we're going to play the Missing Vowels round. Fingers on buzzers teams. I can tell you that the first group are all phrases that include tennis terms. Arrowheads. T service. Correct. Dandies. Tax return. Correct. Arrowheads. Small claims court. Yes, it is. Dandies. Road rally. Correct. Next category, disclaimers. Arrowheads. Terms and conditions apply. Yes, they do. Dandies. Use at own risk. Indeed. Always read the label. Yes, you must. Arrowheads. May contain nuts. Yes, it might. Next category, they all came to being in 1971. Dandies. British decimal currency. Correct. Arrowheads. The Open University. Correct. I don't know this one. It's United Arab Emirates. Next clue. Dandies. Gary Barlow. Yes. Next category, awards for genre fiction. Arrowheads. Hugo Award. Correct, in science fiction. That was the Walter Scott Prize in historical fiction. But no more clues because the noise has happened for the end of the quiz. And I can tell you that the winners with 25 points are the Dandies. 19 points for you, Arrowheads. I'm afraid that means you're going home. But what a great round four. Really good missing voweling. And you've been a really lovely team overall. It was great to meet you and thanks for playing. And that's the end of the show. Join me next time for the quiz so complicated, well, put it this way, if Russia wants to launch a cyber attack on Britain, do it this time next week. GCHQ will still be puzzling out the water wall. Goodbye.